You and your comrades are esteemed monster hunters, members of the renowned Order of Octavius. The ancient order, steeped in tradition and dedicated to combating otherworldly evils, has safeguarded the realms for millennia. Your latest mission awaits, and you gather in the order's headquarters to receive your next assignment from your commanding officer, known simply as King. Over the past month, troubling reports have reached the order's ears, originating from the remote town of Callus. This idyllic settlement has been plagued by mysterious and ominous attacks. Thus far, the victims have been the town's livestock, the lifeblood of the community. Distressed residents speak of eerie nocturnal sounds, forcing them to barricade themselves indoors after dusk. Bafflingly, each morning reveals bizarre, vanishing webs, like whispers of the night. In an attempt to investigate the situation, a four-person scouting team was dispatched to Callus a week ago, but they've not returned leaving a shroud of uncertainty. King shares his concerns and asks you to check in on his acquaintance, Vitulus, a local dairy farmer who was born for the brunt of these livestock losses. He asks you to check in with him and make sure he's all right. King also entrusts your group with a magical spool, a wondrous device capable of winding various materials, including spider silk. If the perpetrators indeed prove to be spiders, this enchanted spool will assist you in collecting vital evidence has capacity to hold up to 200 feet of the elusive silk. Now, as you guys know, the uh, Order of Octavius makes their money selling off monster parts, so the silk is kind of going to go towards uh, funding more adventures. So with King's directives in mind, your party sets out on your journey. After a day or so of travel, you arrive in Callus, a mere hour or two before the sun dips beneath the horizon. The once tranquil town now awaits your investigation, and the secrets hidden within its shadows beckon your expertise in unraveling the mystery that has befallen its lands. Your objectives are to check on Vitulus, as King had asked, harvest the spider silk if they are indeed spiders, find the missing order members, and dispatch the creature or creatures that are terrorizing the town. All right, you all wrote that down, right? I scried it into my brain box. Was there on um, Revive Travel? Did we fight anything? Uh, on your travels, you do not fight anything. Uh, this is a one shot. Let's try to keep it under four hours. Thank you. Hardog <laughs> is bored out of his mind. He's probably like nursing a hangover from the travels. Are we there yet? I'm itching to fight. What are we doing? Since I don't think we've posted any of the other videos with these characters, if you guys want, we'll start with Walker, go to Haldak, Jana, and then Luxobleb. Just give us a brief introduction of your character. Walker is literally Clint Eastwood from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly with crossbows instead of guns. Short, sweet, to the point. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ranger, correct? Yes. All right. And uh, Haldak? Haldak, the halfling barbarian. Just a pretty stout, like, hefty farm boy until uh, orcs attacked. When he got his first taste of battle and blood, he, the Morning Star he carries is a souvenir from the first orc he fell. Ever since he felt that thrill, he had a rather boring, idyllic life. But ever since that, he's been constantly trying to up that thrill through more fights and bloodshed. Uh, the only thing that seems to calm that for him is drinking. Even then, he gets bored of that drink. So, yeah. Makes sense that you would join him on the hunting guild. Oh, yeah. More or less, it's to keep him out of trouble. Otherwise, he would just go on a rampage. So Hardak is just very impatient right now. He's been bored out of his mind this entire trip, and he's probably just about out of the house. All right, uh, Jarna. Jarna is a man of the stars. He's a seven-foot-tall elephant man. He's got long tusks extending out the side of his face. He's in a black and white fur armor set, carrying a giant silver warhammer as well as an iron shield, which has his druid star map uh, inscribed onto it. Nice, and uh, rounding out the group, we have probably, I guess, the youngest member, technically, <laughs> uh, Glexobleb. So Glexobleb is the spawn of Glexogleb, who um, died or was felled in our last adventure. Glexobleb is a plasmoid. He's a chronogy wizard, so he's part of this interdimensional group of wizards that go and manipulate time and space to protect and save communities, planets, and the like. And occasionally he does work with the Order of Octavius to assist in that way similarly. He's uh, rather tall, or at least right now he's kind of small because he's still growing. But yeah, he's a, a plasmoid, and he has some futuristic steel plate armor. He's amorphous, and he uh, manipulates time and space. Nice. I'm sure that's going to come in handy. Uh, do you guys have any particular order that you've been traveling in? 
Um, are we traveling by foot or? You're traveling by foot. I figured I'd be in front because I'm a ranger. The hard act would probably be like second in line. Walker, Haldek, then I imagine Jana and then Blexogleb. Or would Blexogleb be like in between Haldak and Jana with Jana in the back? I guess Blexogleb wouldn't mind being in the back. He's kind of doing, um, because he's amorphous, he's kind of like spinning his head like on a, a swivel, you know, th- doing 360 scan behind him on the, all sides in front, just kind of like surveying the area as we walk. So as you guys walk, you do come to basically the town center. And uh, as you guys enter the town square of Callus, the setting sun casts a warm amber glow over the scene. Your eyes are drawn to a sturdy building with a sign that reads, Soft Stone Tavern Inn. Its pale gray stone walls bathe in the soft golden light. In front of the inn stands a stout dwarven man, his broad shoulders and dark beard silhouetted against the fading daylight. He's in the midst of locking up the tavern methodically, closing the wooden shutters. So yeah, you guys see this guy just kind of closing up shop. Um, and I mean, it's getting late. The sun's going down, but um, it's not terribly late. Uh, whoa, hey, hey, mister, mister. Uh, uh, yes? What do you want? Closing shop for you. The tavern over, owner? Uh, Emma, you, what are you guys doing here? And um, you, you guys see uh, this stout and grizzled male dwarf, uh, sitting about four feet tall, stocky frame, accompanied by like a well-kept salt and peppered beard, uh, neatly braided and adorned with colorful beads. Uh, he's got deep-set, dark brown eyes, uh, twinkled with warmth, contrasting his perpetually stern expression. I and mean, he's just like kind of looking you over as like, I, I am the owner. We haven't been getting much visitors lately. What uh, what are you lot doing here? We're on business from the order, but uh, wine sack's kind of empty. It was like, kind of hoping to get a refill. Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, it's, it's great that you guys are here. I'm assuming you're checking in on well, all the uh, mishaps and the strange occurrences. Oh, yeah, if you could point it in that direction, too, I'd be, that'd be cool. What, what do you guys think? Yeah, I could use some wine first. I'm going to ask him. There was a previous group sent here. Do you know what happened to them? Like, we haven't gotten any word back from them. Oh, yeah. They were uh, here a few days ago before things got really bad. They had asked me some information. I didn't really have much to tell them. I uh, gave them a drink and uh, wished them the best, and we haven't seen them since. So what information did you give them? Just that at night, we've been hearing strange noises. Pretty much any animal that's been out has been uh, taken. I think the last of Tulis's cows has been taken as well. And uh, where would this Tulis live? Well, I think his cow would have been taken a few nights ago. He's uh, down the road that way. But the most recent attack were on the Valance homestead. Unfortunately, Miss Valance isn't doing so well. All right, I think we'll uh, have to go uh, check the Valance since that will probably be the next place hit again if they still have animals. Well, if you have a moment, uh, if you are truly with the order, let me uh, just grab you a quick wine skin. And he does walk back into the tavern, comes out rather quickly, and does hand you a uh, wine skin, Aldak. <laughs> Much appreciated. I flipped my gold. Oh, excellent. And I'll pocket that. Money's been slim lately. You'll actually uh, want to go to the Church of the Four Seasons. And he points over to a church just on the other side. The balances are there. Like I said, uh, the missus isn't doing well. With practically all the uh, livestock gone. Rather than staying in their own homes, everyone's just kind of boarding up in the church. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I'll, uh, I'll follow you there if you, if you care to go. That seems like the best place to go next, before uh, nightfall. Did anyone else have any questions for this gentleman? Glexogleb has shifted into a puddle on the ground. Uh, is your friend all right? Yeah, don't worry about it. He does that sometimes. A pseudopod would reach up and do like a thumbs up like motion. Seems like a tripping hazard. He's pretty sticky. Don't worry about it. He's going to go with the group, but he's going to stay in the puddle and he's just kind of stay on the ground. Yeah, no, that ain't right. You got an elephant man, and that is the least weird thing about your group. <laughs> uh, but he does walk you guys over to the Church of the Four Seasons. It's just like a simple yet elegant stone structure and callus, gray stone walls adorned with intricate vine carvings, and a beautiful stained glass window above the entrance depicts four sisters representing different seasons beneath the gaze of Tanya. You guys feel free to give me a religion check if you like. Sure. <laughs> oh, I got a 15. I got a 22. All right, let's see uh, how Justin does. I, I wasn't going to make it a religion check. I was just uh, I was just sipping my wine. Oh, so you're not going to bother, is what you're saying? Oh, no, I, I could care less. Okay. <laughs> Jonah, you've never been much into religion. Your religion is nature itself. Also a cleric. <laughs> oh, oh, you're right. You're also a cleric? 
Yeah, I'm a cleric three druid two. I assume that as we come up to the the church or the temple, uh, Jarna just kind of snorts or snickers to himself and goes, hm, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, Walker and Lexogleb, you guys would know that Tanya is on, like, the Council of Greater Deities. She is known as the First Mother, known to be a deity of nature. Uh -huh. The Sisters of the Four Seasons, which this church is, uh, namesake for, are essentially, like, lesser deities that represent the, the Four Seasons. Uh, yeah, so Lexogleb would notice uh, that, and he would just, uh, say out loud, um, uh, Mother. And he'll do like uh, whatever gesture is appropriate, like bend a knee or whatever, like nod, namaste. <laughs> so you guys watch as Blexogleb attempts to pay homage to this deity in the proper way. As a whole. And you rolled well enough on your religion check that it is accurate to the way followers would behave to the point that your dwarven friend who you have got not gotten the name of, is like, oh, you are, are you a follower of the first mother? I'm a follower of all. That, that sounds like it'd be difficult. Sometimes silence is necessary. So he'll proceed into the, the door of the church. <laughs> uh, so do you actually like open the door or do you like like just slide under? I'll slide under. But you're wearing armor now. You couldn't get under. Yeah, no, it says in my... Let me go back here. Uh, amorphous form, shape self. As a bonus action... Oh, no, that's not it. Hold, please. It said something about um, if I... Like when I come back, I come up wearing like normal clothes. Because I don't think I have armor on, right? I thought you said you did. Uh, yeah, you specifically said in your, your intro that you have wearing armor. Uh, yeah, but it's more like a fixed to his body, like a flex suit, sort of. So this isn't like an airtight seal. You would be able to, like, get yourself low enough to go under the door. And uh, as you do, you see in front of you a turtle. And he just like, kind of looked down at the puddle at his feet. He's like, hello. You watch as he takes something out of his hand and he puts a pamphlet out towards you. Uh, so he just extends his pamphlet down to this puddle. Welcome. Here's your tag. It's not going to bother me. Flexoblab will reemerge as himself, grabbing the pamphlet as he rises. He'll look at it. But what does the pamphlet say? It is a pamphlet for Tonya and the Four Seasons. It's basically just giving you all the information about these uh, deities. That he would already know. <laughs> He'll scan it very quickly as he's like reemerging to his full form. He'll look at this turtle and just say, Name. Well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Brother Olo. I'm uh, running this here church for uh, Tanya and the, the Sisters of the Four Seasons. And, you know, just uh, keep an eye on my flock. And uh, before everyone else can get in here, you can notice it looks like practically the whole town is here. As he's, like, explaining that, a pseudopod will extend from my back and, like, open the door for uh, my compatriots here. <laughs> the dwarf kind of comes in first. Oh, welcome, Laddie Grim. Good to see ya. I looks like you brought some friends. Ah, uh, and he starts handing out pamphlets. Half a pamphlet, half a pamphlet, half a pamphlet. You can get me. I, if, you, you really don't need help throwing that away. I'm sure. Oh uh, no, no, no! If that's the guy, send your name too, and he hands you two. <laughs> and I guess we throw two away. I just throw it on the floor. Well, that's rude. And he hands you four more. Many times he just like fumbles it up and tosses it. Ah, uh, well, hold up. Now I got eight, and he hands you eight more. Fumbles them up, tosses. Now, young fella, we can do this all day, but I promise you, I will not run into pamphlets. <laughs> what, you got like an infinite bag of holding in there? In fact, he does. All things are possible with Tanya, particularly pamphlets, and he hands you 16 pamphlets. How many trees <laughs> she kill him? All trees serve Tanya, whether they be in their regular form or in pamphlet form. <laughs> now, you'll be a good disciple, and you'll just at least put one of those in your pocket. They don't have pockets. Blexo Gleb will grab it and shove it into his body. I'll say he's got the right idea, really taking in Tanya. Hardak doesn't really have, he has essentially whatever the hobbit form of farmer jeans would be, like with the overalls and everything, and no shirt or anything. It goes up to like a little higher than his belly button. He just puts it in his pocket. Oh, that's bad. Jonna and uh, Walker, you guys are just accepting the first pamphlet? Yeah. I just look at it. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I just pocket it. Wonderful, wonderful. Kind of reads through it, kind of looking at all the information, and says uh, to himself, uh, yeah, definitely fake. Yeah, Jarna is convinced it's fake. Yeah, <laughs> totally fake. But yeah, I mean, Brother Olo, he's like, anyway, welcome to the, the Church of the Four Seasons. 
We're all hoping to, you know, stay in here and not die. Glexobleb will um, extend his head, like, away from his body towards this gentleman and just say, um, why is it that we are here? Why am I supposed to have that answer? Glexobleb looks confused. <laughs> that he grew because, like, they're, uh, they're hoping to see uh, Tori Valance. Oh, yeah, no, she's not doing very good. She got attacked last night. Oh, wait, what the next one? Where is she? Oh, she's in the back, you know, a lot of, like, screaming. Out of spoken the rest of the uh, rest of the group. Which way? Has anyone tried slapping her across the face? That that usually doesn't work to attack victims. Yeah, I know. I would recommend it. Probably not a good idea. I gave her a pamphlet. But yeah, follow me. She's back here, and he just like slowly starts going towards like the back of the church. And uh, you guys do see like you know a bunch of people in the pews, uh, essentially just like hunkering down. Um, you can see that a lot of the windows are boarded up. They're really just trying to like keep themselves safe in a single building, just hoping to get through the next night. Glexelbleb will follow with the group as a puddle, and you just see the pamphlet like in the puddle, like flapping as he goes down the aisle. Yeah, and as you do that, like a small child starts like chasing after you to grab the pamphlet. I will pick up bead, and the, the pamphlet will flap faster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about this time that the mother like, no, 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 don't chase what whatever that is. Please don't, yeah, don't touch, don't touch moving puddles, child. I'll return to a normal pace. <laughs> is there a trash can anywhere that I could see? Um, you might find a trash can, or like just even like a small table if you were just looking to put something down. Uh, using my trunk, I crumple up the piece of paper and throw it away as we walk past the nearest trash can. Oh, man, you guys giving so much hospitality by Brother Olo, and this is how you treat him. <laughs> uh, Glexelblad will um, return to form quick and just say to Jarna, we should not waste, and then he'll turn back into a puddle. Yeah, meanwhile, Brother Olo is just going on about his pamphlets. Yeah, I, guess, yeah, I use the be- I'm talking about the best materials for the pamphlets. You know, Tony deserves the best. So where's this lady? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 we're getting there. And I mean, he's moving very slowly. That's a little bit further. I'm like right at his heel. Maybe you could just like point in the direction. We can maybe get there sometime tonight. Oh yeah, we're, we're on our way. We're almost there. But anyway, I use nothing but the finest eggs. Cultivate them myself, you know, out of nature. Well, I saw the hard eggs. Gonna take like the uh, the butt of his morning star, kind of poke at his shell, just kind of like prod him, prod him. Uh, it moves him ever so slightly forward each time you bonk him on the back. But he doesn't seem to notice. He does just kind of blather on until he gets to the back of the chair. He's like, oh, what hair? And um, what's everyone's passive perception? I got a 15. 16. 11. Jonna and Walker, you would hear, you know, ever so slightly and muffled coming from the store. It's like screams of like agony. Just like, it is uh, kind of, what's the word looking for? Not like uh, constant, but you know, Kind of like every now and then. It's like, oh! Intermittent. Thank you, intermittent. <laughs> like Thank the... you, Walker. You knew exactly what I was <laughs> meant. Like, oh, yeah, Sam's like she's having a bit of a fit. And uh, he's going to open the door. And it gets a little like, oh, oh. I think I've seen this movie. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, he wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> you see essentially like a sleeping bag laid out on the floor. And there's a female halfling has like a towel over her head that looks like it's been uh, dipped in some cold water, a dish of water on the side. And you see a uh, male halfling kind of just tending to her. Uh, he looks extremely worried. He's like, oh dear, oh dear, please, please come back, honey. Dear. So I make a medicine check to see if I could like discern what's, you know, what's wrong with her. Do you go near her or are you just like trying to like figure this out from afar? Yeah, I'll go up to her. Um, as you do, you see the half of Who are you? What, what are you doing here? Brother, brother, what's going on? And it's like, ah, oh, easy there, Todd. Calm down. Everything's all right. I think these folks are here to help. You think? I didn't actually ask them any questions. I just handed them some pamphlets. And Walker was, uh, yeah, we were on here with business from the Order. Right, you did mention that, I think. Uh, not to you, brother. The Order? Where have you been? We actually had a previous group come through here, and uh, we haven't had any confirmation of their whereabouts after the fact. So we were hoping you guys would know. No, they they came and went. It's like just like our livestock, just like our chickens. Oh, our poor chickens. Oh, Tori, what am I supposed to do without you? Erna says, I apologize. We have been here for quite some time. However, we got hung up 
I look over at the turtle who took his sweet ass time talking to us. <laughs> Joanna continues and says, but anyway, let, do you mind if I take a look? Give me a persuasion, Jack. He does seem quite frazzled. Oh, Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, with that nat 20, um, he immediately seems to like calm down as like your calming, soothing voice. I uh, just seems to reassure him and put him like a bit of a sense of uh, just like a lull of comfort. It's like, uh, yeah, yes, please, please, anything to help my uh, Tori. Okay, yeah, then I just want to see if I could make some type of a medicine check or uh, you know something. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna crouch down over by. I mean, I only got a plus two, but whatever. Something like that. All right, uh, you guys, feel free to give me some medicine I checks. Uh, Haldak and uh, Blexogleb, are you doing anything? Um, Aldax contemplating whether or not he wants to smack her or smack him. <laughs> it's a tough decision. They both seem quite smackable at this point. Uh, he's probably going to lay back, find a chair in the room, kind of like lay back, observing that, deciding whether or not a smack should happen. Right, uh, Glexogleb, are you doing anything or just watching? I guess uh, Glexogleb would be as a puddle, sort of just casing the perimeter, like it's circling them. He dips a pseudopod into the bowl of water to inspect it. He's just like investigating around them, uh, maybe coming like brushing up against them, like covering them in his body. Yeah, you go near the water and Tyler's like, no, 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 what, what, what is that? No, get away from that. That's, that's for my wife. Leave that be. And like he tries to smack you, but it's just like, you know, smacking a puddle and he's not very strong. I, I'm just basically like a dog sniffing everything, just up in everybody's grill, but as a puddle. Walker, what's your bonus to that? I only got a plus two, so I got a 12. Uh, yeah, you don't think she's necessarily in the right mind as she's like, again, screaming every now and then. And Todd does go back over and like reapply some more cold water to the towel on her head. But Jana, as you're kind of inspecting her, you do see some bite marks. Pretty large ones, in fact. They seem spider-like. You definitely feel like this is either some sort of poison or venom. I uh, turn to the group, or I, I speak to the room and say, I see, uh, you come into contact with any spiders as of late. Are you like, just asking everybody? Or? <laughs> yeah, I'm speaking to, uh, to the woman. Uh, and then, is it her husband that's right next to her? It's her husband who's next to her. The woman herself doesn't seem like she's able to respond in her current state. Yeah, so I'll, I'll ask him uh, what experience with spiders that they've had recently and explain that I, I do see where there are bite marks that I think it's possibly some type of a venom or poison that's, you know, afflicting her. Oh, oh, heavens no. We we heard some noises coming from behind our house where the, the chicken coops are. I was I was too scared to go out, but, but Tori, she... She's so strong-willed and so hot-headed. She, she went out there to fight whatever it was. When I heard the noises stop, I went out to investigate, and she was, she was on the ground, and the chickens were gone. Chicken spiders. <laughs> Where are chicken spiders? Glexoblab will take the form of, like, a large spider, and then he'll look up like, Miglamorphs. They look like this. Um, it's at that point that Brother Olo will smack you with a pamphlet. It's a bit harder than you were expecting, but I was like, no, no spiders, no spiders. Glexoblab will kind of like splatter and then come back together. The pamphlet that's in his body is kind of like crumpled up a bit now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Here, take another one. And he just shoves another one within you. Jesus. But Todd will look at you, John. He's like, P please, is there any spell or anything you can do to help her? Nothing that I specifically have, but I think if we can find the creature that, that bit her, somebody might be able to reverse engineer an antidote. Oh, please, please. He just goes over to his wife. Again, he's an emotional wreck at this point, just like keeping up with her. Like, it's going to be all right, darling. They're going to find you a cure. And he's just like reapplying the towel. And she's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, we're not going to get much out of this. Uh, who else has animals? Like, is all, are all of your chickens gone? Every single one gone in an instant. Who else has any livestock? Do you know? Uh, brother Olo and Papa, well, there is Vit Tulis. But uh, he's not at the church. And uh, what direction would we be going from here to there? No, oh, you know, it's about northeast. Big farm, can't miss it. All right. We let him stay here, but uh, he wanted to keep his calf in here. All right, excellent. That's going to be our next stop. Is that somebody who hasn't been affected yet? The half one's the only one that's been bit. Right, right. Yeah, as far as you know, only livestock have been taken. There hasn't been any people killed or missing other than the scouts that were sent. Is there anyone who still has livestock that hasn't been taken? 
Yeah, that's what I was asking. We're, we're going northeast. Okay. So a big fall. As far as I know, all the cows uh, are gone, but uh, I think Ventulus has a single calf left. Okay. That's called bait. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> I agree. I say we head there. Um, so as you guys leave, and Brother Olo will follow you out. Well, I do wish you the best of luck, Jana. And he's going to go to shake your hand. I greatly appreciate what you did uh, for Tori and uh, Todd, you know, just looking them over. I really hope that you can uh, find a cure for her and uh, help her get through this. And uh, he's going to cast protection from evil on you. Perfect. Okay, cool. I shake his hand back. May the first mother's blessing be on you. And uh, there's also a pamphlet in his hand that he also hands you. I take the pamphlet with my trunk and I respond to him. It made the stars light your way. Well, man, I... When he says whatever about First Mother, Glexobleb will attempt to do that maneuver again, whatever that appropriate maneuver was, like a sidewinding kickflip. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just a whole breakdance routine. It's actually better than the last time you did it because you actually read in the pamphlet the exact proper way of doing it. Yeah. I... Someone read the pamphlet. I should have blessed you. Unfortunately, I only got one. Yeah, it was left, left, right, and I was doing left, right, right. So, but I figured it out. I oh, know that that's really good, and he uh, copies you to an extent. Perfect. Man, yeah, mess of luck, don't die. <laughs> As you guys uh, do, you do also pass the Valent Homestead that was mentioned to you by the dwarf. We should might as well give it a, a like a quick look over for like any evidence of anything. Just get to this other farmer. I mean, maybe at the very least, you know, you know, knock his cow out. We can have some dinner. <laughs> As we're walking over there, Lexelbleb is just going to walk up beside Jarna, mirroring like his gait, and he's going to morph his face to look like an elephant face with a trunk. I'm just going to like basically move exactly the way he's moving. Uh, Jarnak <laughs> is complaining the entire time, saying, "No, come on, let's go. No, look, why are we bothering?" He's just complaining the whole time, trying to get everyone to just move on. As we walk, Jarna lifts his trunk up. See if he can catch a whiff of the chickens. Um, and then uh, uh, Glexelbleb just, um, he'll burp um, and like spit the pamphlet out of his body and go, fake, uh, trying to mirror uh, Jarna's voice as well. Uh, give me a performance check. <laughs> okay. Not great. I don't have a great charisma, so uh, 14. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It kind of just comes off as a bit robotic. You kind of get the tone right and the look right, but it's... Just, it's almost Uncanny Valley version, rather than being like an actual, like, solid performance. It's like John, it's like Jana off of Wish? <laughs> More or less, yeah. Yeah, okay. And like, not the lucky version, like, oh, hey, this actually wasn't too bad. Like, the absolute worst version. Yeah, clearance, Jana. Gotcha. Jana, give me a perception check as you're passing the Valance Homestead. This is my whiff of the chickens, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, you're trying to get a whiff. Uh, I take it you have advantage if it's smell-based? Correct. <laughs> yeah, you, you take advantage. Nice. All right. Yeah, and you do, just because of how strong your sense of smell is, you do get a decent whiff of the chickens. It does seem weaker than you thought it would be, but it could possibly be because you're looking in the back of the house and it doesn't look like there's any chickens there. You can just make out like a broken part of the fence towards the back as you're passing. Uh, looks like a sizable creature had broken the back of the fence. Uh, can we look for any, like... Prince. Are you going back there or are you going to continue to uh, the farm of Vitulis? I figured it out, like, as we're passing by, like, while he's smelling, I was like, I'll, I'll just look if there's anything, like, obviously noticeable besides just a broken fence. What does the uh, chicken coop look like? Does it look like there's been any damage or anything like that? It looks like there has been some damage. Basically, just like a hole big enough that, like, maybe a uh, medium to large sized creature could reach in to grab all the chickens. Okay. Hardak's going to go up to that and he's going to start kicking it and like taking his morning star and like beating the crap out of it and just cussing like, this is what I want to do and I need something to fight. Wrecking the place. All right. Anyone doing something constructive? Deconstructive. <laughs> well, I, I think that's as much information we're going to get out of, you know, a crime scene that with nothing left in there. So, yeah, we're, we're going on. If you do want to check my surroundings, feel free to give me an investigation check. Glexoblab will be investigating in the same manner he was in the church. We're at the chicken coop, you said? Yes. He's going to be, like, going up the walls in between all the hay, if there's hay on the floor. He's just covering the whole place with his body, like, trying to pick up any scents or any, like, anything like that. All right. Give me an investigation check. 
I've got a 14. 14? No, not terrible, but not, not great. 23. Hey, someone came to play. Yeah, Jonna, you, you get a whiff of the chickens, and that's about all you get. Particularly being in the back now, um, having such a strong sense of smell, it's almost blocking out the, your other senses, and it's almost too overpowering that you kind of have to, like, stop for a second and just kind of hold your breath and try and, like, meditate and bring back your mind, uh, almost being taken out by the whiff of the chickens. Some dank-ass chickens. I'll get you every time. Walker, you are noticing some odd tracks. At some parts, it almost looked like a hoofed creature. Other parts, it almost looks bug-like or arachnid-like. The gates are weird. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like the regular gate. <laughs> no, but you know like the gate of a creature walking? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. It doesn't seem to match that of, like, known hooved creatures. But the gates of these tracks don't seem to match any known hooved creatures that you're aware of or any, like, arachnid creatures. Okay. That's that's weird. Um, but, yeah, with that 14, you're not really getting much out of those tracks. Lexogleb. You are, like, circling the area. You also notice the strange tracks. But you do notice underneath one of the coops, probably the one that Haldak isn't destroying, you notice what looks like kind of like a black bit of spider silk underneath the coops in the shadows. I just dive under the coop. Okay. Are you touching the spider silk? Are you grabbing it all? I'm going to just put my whole body under there and catch any silk in my body if I can. Well, hold on. Don't we have that tool? Yeah, with a spool, spindle, thing. Or maybe maybe I'll, I'll put a pseudopod under there and do a big swipe. I guess you do that. You do a big swipe of this black spider silk. Are you bring it outside the coop? Yes. Um, as you do, as soon as it hits the sun, you can kind of feel it inside your body almost infuriating. Um, okay. You can imagine that it wasn't for the fact that it was inside your body, it would infuriate you like practically instantly. But because it's insulated inside your body, it's taking longer for the something to get through and hit it. So it's evaporating much slowly, but you know you're having much time with this in the sun. I put my whole body under the uh, in a puddle underneath the I just slide under this under the coop once I realize that. Yeah, you guys would all see Glexogleb attempt to come out and back in as he was like starting to bubble. Hey, Glexo, what are you doing underneath there? I require assistance. Yeah? What kind? And I'll I'll stick a little pseudopod out, and I'll just do a like a come here motion with my finger. <laughs> yeah. So what, what Walker like crouches down and is like, well, what you got underneath here? <laughs> um. And then uh, yeah, Glexel Bible will just say, I have stumbled upon silk question mark, <laughs> and you can't show us it. It seems to be disturbed by the sunlight. All right. Does anyone have a sack? You also know that you have that spool that King gave you to wrap up spider silk. I'm going to say it. Alexa, you're going to wrap this. You're going to take the spool, wrap the silk around it, and then stick the spool into the bag and then cinch the bag shut. Ideal. And he reaches his pseudopod out to grab the spool. The spool will travel down his pseudopod and into his body. I imagine his head is out because he was like talking to a walker. Yeah, Glexobleb is just going to continue to look Walker in the eye, and he just sees this deadpan face of Glexobleb, but then his body is, like, gyrating underneath the <laughs> coop. Yeah, you can hear that guy. <laughs> and then the spool will make it work its way back up, and he'll, like, hand it back to him, and it'll have the, the spider silk on it. Yeah, and, and, and we put it in a bag, so it doesn't get any sunlight on it. Yeah, and it seems uh, as you are putting it in the bag, some sunlight does hit it, you would notice that it seems to be protecting the silk. On the spool, it doesn't seem to be just evaporating. Oh, wow. isn't that nifty? It still goes in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> still goes in the bag. It's about this time, Hal Dak, that you have completely demolished one of the chicken coops. It was like that when I found it, all right? You guys saw it. It was like that when I found it, all right? All right, now let's move on. I imagine <laughs> yeah. Hal Dak is making his way through the chicken coops, just, like, making a mess, and he's, like, approaching the one that Glexobleb is under, and, like, Glexobleb will, like, slither around and be like, oh, 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 oh. And Glexobleb does look quite odd because he is currently covered in uh, chicken feathers. Uh, Glexobleb does not notice this. Oh, he's good on you. <laughs> you know, he's been as a puddle going around this chicken uh, chicken farm under the coops, 
And just picking up literally everything. Yeah, like it's gonna need a shower or whatever his kind does to get rid of particles from their being. Uh, Glexobleb actually has like very poor sense of smell because that's not like a sensory organ that like they a plasmoid need really. So he has no idea that he smells like complete chicken shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, you guys have been in the chicken coop area long enough that you're no longer getting whiffs of the chicken. It has just become the norm. Like, all right, let's let's get the show on the road to the next uh, residence. All right. And again, the town is like practically dead. There's no one in the streets, no hubbub, nothing going on. Even when you get to Tulis Farms, doesn't seem like anything crazy is happening. Oh, that's good. But yeah, you get to the Valance Homestead. Just stands as a modest and unassuming dwelling. Nestle amidst the rural landscape of Callus. Uh, it's quaint. Weathered facade is a treatment to the simple life led by its inhabitant. Yeah, I'm going to go front door and just knock. Hello, anyone there? Yeah, and as you do, you can see, um, obviously, like, the door is closed. But you see, like, curtains are shuttered. Looks like the, the windows are boarded up. And you knock? Oh, yeah, I'm knocking, yeah. Um, and as you do, the first thing you hear is just a low mo. Oh, then you hear like a Shh, quiet, quiet. I think we don't know who it is. And it's like we, we could hear your cow, man. Like, uh, Ooh, Abby, quiet. Ah, uh, who, who, who's there? Uh, we're from the order. We're here to help you out. You sure you're not some creature after the animal I don't have in my house? I'm fairly positive. And, um, John, you would definitely smell this. Everyone else would probably get a slight whiff of it as you guys get to the door. But there is a strong scent of manure. Black still blood is oblivious. Hardak is going to go up to the door and he's going to start counting. Three, two. Why, why is it? Why is he counting? Why are they count? Why is the counting happening? You start to hear like a hoof inside, like also like click, 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 almost like counting along. Like quiet, Abby. Um, as soon as he hits one, he's going to break down the door. Please, don't, just leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, he's going to break down the door. Uh, all right, give me a strength check. Um, you're not able to break it. I'm just an old man with nothing else in this house. Like, Why except, it happy? except your cow, which is going to act as bait for uh, whatever's been eating all your, the livestock. So, uh, unless you want to get eaten too, I I suggest you open the door. And I'm going to start counting again. Three, two... Okay, 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 okay. And he's going to quickly open the door and close it behind him. You guys just see an elderly farmer, basically an elderly food man. Like, please, you must know King. I I helped him a younger time. He's happy so all I've got left. And uh, you guys hear another move. It's like a really dopey move. <laughs> like, not a real, like, you're not going to, like, uh, oh, a healthy animal there. It's like, oh, no, it's retarded. Oh, no. <laughs> From the back of the room, you just hear... <laughs> like straining sound. Like a straining sound from Blexoglub? Yeah. Whoever were, would turn around to, to see what the fuck is going on. Blexoglub is like squatting, covered in feathers and hay, and he's just making straining sounds uh, to the point his face is like kind of like turning from a blue to like a deep purple, and then you just hear thud, and an egg rolls out. <laughs> Did that puddle just lay an egg? It just rolls across the room. Uh, very slowly into the other room. Um, so he hasn't let you guys in. He came out. Um, he seems to be concerned that you want to use his only calf as bait. Yeah, we're just going to leave it out at the front, and then the moment that something comes around... Please, please, Abby, Abby saw all I have left. All my other cows are gone. Yeah, don't worry about it. We, we, we can shove her back inside. The, the moment we get... No, 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 no. If, if this is your help, I don't want any. Leave. I mean, you got to do it our way, or if they're going to break into your place to get it. It's one half dozen or the other. I'd like to put my hand on his shoulder and try and persuade him by saying, like, like you know, please allow us to help and do our job. Feel free to give me a reception... Uh, pers sorry, a persuasion check. Uh, take disadvantage. Um, and I put my hand on Jarna's uh, and give him guidance on that. All right, and it's still at disadvantage. So that would be a 14. A guidance is what, a D4? A D4, yeah. yep. 15. A 15. Look, if, if this is your way of helping, I want none, none of it. Please leave. If it's between me and Abby, we will take our chances. All right, well, hope you don't get eaten by the giant spiders. Bye. <laughs> and I just start walking back. <laughs> I'm actually going to go post up around over here and uh, basically wait until nightfall when this shit starts going down. All right. So is he keeping the calf inside? He is keeping the calf inside the house. 
And again, you guys get the feeling that the main reason he doesn't want your help is because you plan on using his last calf as like bait. Yeah, you just okay. take it back in. That's why we, we, we'd have a direct line of sight of everything coming in instead of having to, you know, figure out where they're going to burst in through his house. Guys, does it, does it, does it sound like I need to kick a door down? Because I, I will kick down the door. Yeah, don't worry. Whatever's been eaten, all the animals will come break down the house anyway, so we'll just wait. Also, I believe you tried one already. Can we not? Wait, can I just kick down the door? It's not going to do anything. It's one door. Don't worry. Just take a nap. No one's going to admit it. Get this man a little door, pronto. It's not doing it. The guy's sitting duck in there. Whatever broke through the chicken coop's going to kick in this door or go through a window. It's, he's, he's helpless. We may as well just, you know, do the work. Walker, as you're, like, walking away, give me a perception check. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, no, not great. Let's see, let's see, let's see, well, let's see, what is my perception? Plus five, that's an 11, woo! Yeah, no, you're not really seeing much, you're kind of too focused on what you see as, like, this stubborn old man who's, you, you, you wouldn't want. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I assume this is a hill, so I'll actually have some decent vision, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna hang out and smoke a cigar. <laughs> uh, is gonna turn into a puddle of chicken feathers, um, and he's just going to start slithering away, looking for an alternative way into the house. Farmer is still outside. Uh, he's like, Walker starts walking away. In that case, could I try and turn into a puddle and s- just slide under the door? He's standing in front of the door. You'd have to sneak past him. Yeah, I'm a puddle. I'll just... You, you're a bright, what, green puddle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could, could I attempt that? Um, you can. Give me a spell check at disadvantage. At disadvantage, you said? Uh, yes. Okay. Since you're basically trying to go between his legs to get through the, the door. <laughs> mm, 15. Um, he seems too concerned with slipping back into the building. They doesn't seem to notice you. So I slide into the door on the other side of the door and I lock it. Oh, so you try to get in before he does? Yes. All right. It's uh, about this time you're going to take a D4 of damage. For, for being in the house? As you feel a very rough tongue begin to lift you up. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Abby, Abby, what's going on there? Why is the door locked? Abby! I hope Abby likes the taste of chicken feathers. <laughs> um, she doesn't seem to mind. As you're, like, coming to the realization of what you're being, like, um, you see, like, in a rather unusual little innocent-looking cat. Uh, kind of like a split disposition. Most striking feature, however, is her particularly hanging tongue. It's kind of like dangles from the side of her mouth, just giving her a really goofy expression. Perfect. And yes, she's just like trying to lap you up. Yeah, I imagine once I realize that I'm getting like, you know, eaten, I'll start to materialize into my humanoid form. But I imagine she's still like licking me as I'm like returning to my normal self. So I'm just like kind of getting like, yeah, like lapped up. Yeah, and she kind of like uh, looks at you and like kind of cocks her head for a second and goes, whoa, and then like starts licking your face. And this time, because you're not like a puddle, which is like really thinning yourself out, it's not hurting you as she licks your face. And this is less, uh, I'm going to drink up this slop that's on the ground. And more of like, oh, friend, I'm going to lick their face. This is a calf, you said? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. I am going to cast Tensor's Float Disc beneath her feet. Okay. Um, does it like kind of like lift up off the ground a little bit as you do this? Yes. Um, it actually might be kind of tough. A horizontal plane of force, three feet in diameter, and it floats three feet above the ground. So, um, so as you do this, you just watch as like she tips over and just like falls three feet off the off the platform. As I just like on the floor goes, whoa! Wait, 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 wait! It it wouldn't like rise up to her stomach and lift her up off the ground slightly? Oh, no, it lifts her up just fine, but she just, like, topples over. Ugh. And she, uh, she, she, gets, she gets back up and just starts licking your face again. Um, three feet, on the three other feet side, I, I mean, yeah, I guess I wouldn't technically pick her up. I mean, three feet's pretty wide for her to fall over, you think? Well, no, she mostly fell over just because she's off balance. Hmm. You, you have already gotten the idea that not the brightest prayer in the box. She's fallen over onto the ground or onto the disc? No, the disc rose up and she just tilted over and fell off the disc. Hmm. Okay. Got back up and started licking your face. 
Meanwhile, outside the door, Vitulus is trying to get back in. Abby, why'd you lock me out again? Abby! <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> um, and how that you're kind of briefly hearing what's going on behind the door. You have like a good sense of what's going on. And uh, Johnny, you are also there. Walker has walked off to uh, smoke a cigar. Yep, I'm, I'm just laying down on the hill, <laughs> just smoking, just waiting. <laughs> and the farmer is grabbing a, a key to unlock the door. I cast levitate instead. <laughs> All right, that's two spell slots. I know. All right, uh, yeah, and she starts to levitate. Uh, how much control do you have of that? One creature or loose object, you can see within range, rises vertically up to 20 feet, remains suspended there for the durations, which is up to 10 minutes. I can lift up to 500 pounds. The target can move only by pushing or pulling against a fixed object, which allows it to move as if it were climbing. You can change the target's altitude by up to 20 feet in the direction on your turn. If you are the target, you can move up or down. Otherwise, you can use, use your action to move the target, which must remain within the spell's range. So yeah, I can just move it. So as you're doing that, Haldak, what are you doing? Because the farmer is trying to unlock the door. Yeah, I was just going to try and break down the door again. So I heard that commotion. Uh, John, are you doing anything? Oh, I'm watching him, getting ready to laugh. All right, and uh, Blexoglip, as you do cast Levity on this calf, um, again, oddly enough, you don't know if the calf is just naturally unbalanced, but you watch as the calf just, like, swings and is now, like, upside down. <laughs> um, and it's now, like, just licking your face upside down. <laughs> uh, so at this point, I'm going to try and take her out the back door with me. It's about this point you hear the door unlock, and Vitula swings the door open, seeing his calf upside down, floating, licking your face, like, no, no, please! And, like, he's going to hop onto his calf. Please, don't take her. She's all I have left. Please. I, I take the cow with me, and he can come for the ride. Uh, he's going to do a strength test against you from atop the cow the cow's floating the cow's floating so if you gonna... wait are you able to actually have the cow move the cow i don't think you can if it's levitating you can use your action to move the target which must remain within the spell's range um so yeah give me a give me a strength or athletics check as he's going to try to keep the calf where she is she, he's gonna like hold the try and pull the cow back down to the ground well i'm assuming you're trying to pull the cow uh, the cow to the back door, correct? Yeah, I can move it as part of the spell. It doesn't need a phys- doesn't mean need me to physically move it. Oh, interesting. As long as it's within the range spell's range, which is twenty feet, so I could theoretically be twenty feet away and still move it. Uh, is, is there a spell DC save on it for for that? What's your spell save DC? An unwilling creature that succeeds on a con save throw is unaffected. Yeah. So, what is your spell save DC? The save for this spell is a constitution 15. Okay, so then your spell save is a 15. So he's going to make a strength check. He's put some strength to him, being a farmer. Uh, it's only a plus two, but we'll see how he does. Oh, no. He's floating along with it as you like try to bring it out the door. Yeah, I run as fast as I can. I was originally going, trying to find a back door, but I immediately changed course and just run as fast as I can out the front door into the middle of town, pulling this cow. You do see a, uh, a back door. Okay, yeah, yeah, fuck it. We'll, we'll go out the back door then. I just bring this cow and this man out the back door as fast as I can. And uh, Walker, you would see them out coming from the back of the backside. Uh, you see the farmer holding on to a floating cow. <laughs> it's like, oh, flying cows. And there's just chicken feathers flying off of me as I'm running. <laughs> um, Haldek and Jonah, what are you guys doing? As you can see through the door, Lexo burst through the back door with the farmer and the cow. I'm going to ha- have to follow them. Yeah, I'm tailing behind. I got my morning star and it's ready. Uh, Walker, are you following as well? Well, how far away am I? Is this like, you know, like 30 feet or something like that? Or is this just an extrapolation? I mean, this is just an extrapolation, but you can get over there if you want. Yeah, okay. Because I was thinking, well, what time, like, like, how much light do we have left? You might have an hour left, give or take. All right. That's not great. But as you do, a run over here, Walker... And anyone who enters the back, except for Blexogleb, who is probably focusing too much on the levitation, feel free to give me some perception checks. All right, let's not suck on this one. Oh, God damn it, that's a nine. So you hop over the fence, Walker, not seeing the gigantic hole in the fence on the side here. I got a natural 20. <laughs> you see everything. <laughs> oh, two nat 20s. So Haldak and Jonah, 
Well, you guys immediately notice the massive break in the fence here that Walker just ignores and actually just hops the fence, completely oblivious of it. You do also notice a lot more of those strange tracks that you saw at the Valance homestead, and they seem to go out in this direction. Excellent. This is great. Finally, some action. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> And I'm just kicking my heels, like, running down, trying to chase down Blexogleb. I'll do the same thing. Well, Blexogleb, are you stopping now that you're outside? No, I'm just running. <laughs> where, where are you running? I don't know. So I'm going to run. Actually, sorry, I didn't notice that, right? I didn't notice those tracks. No. Uh, you have not. You've been too focused on this. But he is going to try to pick a new strength check to try and get the cow to stop. Puts his feet down. He's, like, really good as a hole. If I notice him trying to attempt to do that, I want to just, like, lift him straight up in the air 20 feet. Okay, he's going to do a strength check to see if he can hold on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep the uh, the save the same. Uh, you said 20 feet? Yeah, 20 feet in the air. Oh. That one. He manages to hold on till he gets up to 20 feet in the air. Oh, no. And that is when he drops, like, Abby! Boom! And he's going to take four damage. He is, he's hurt. Oh, please, no. My Abby, <sighs> please don't take her. She's all I have. Um, so you see a man who is now not only broken mentally, emotionally, but also now physically. <laughs> Lex and Web will feel really bad about that and like run over to try and aid him. He's just trying to like grasp at you and not like to like kind of like strangle you, just like to bring closer, like just to beg you. Please don't take her. Please. Please. Can I make a non lethal unarmed strike against the back of fucking Blexogleb? <laughs> you, you can. Uh, 13 will actually hit. Ha. I'm going to use Chrono Shift to make you re roll that. Okay. You can you. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Perfect. I got an at 20. <laughs> Wait, now it does double non-lethal damage. Yeah, I imagine you strike him, uh, Blexoglub, like, pulses, and, like, that exact motion goes back in reverse, and then you strike him again, but harder. <laughs> <laughs> this will teach you to manipulate time. I'll also go ahead and cast Healing Word on the farmer. How much damage do I take? It'd be two if it's double damage. So I have to roll for my concentration, right? Ah, uh, you do, and the cow is yeah, yeah. two feet up, uh, twenty feet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what is the roll that I have to make? You only took two damage. And it's ten or half of the damage, whatever is higher. So ten. Yep. Oh. Well, well, what's, uh, what's your con bonus there, Corey? My constitution bonus. Yep. Uh, plus two. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the cow's not you... dead yet. You just make it. The cow remains hovering. Again, upside down. Uh, tongue is just hanging out the side, but, you know, upside down. I imagine when he gets struck in the head, uh, cow kind of, like, dips a little bit and then, like, raises, raises back up to the altitude he was at. Yeah, it's like, move, move. <laughs> I'm going to cast Healing Word on the farmer. All right, roll me some dice. Uh, and he will gain four health. All right, that <laughs> He's back to full. And then I'll tell Blexogleb the cow down. I can just shapeshift into a cow, and we can use me as bait. Why did you wait till now to say <laughs> that? Why didn't we do that from the beginning? Because this is funnier. <laughs> Blexogleb will slowly bring the cow down, very slowly. But as the cow is, is coming back down, Blexogleb is going to morph his face into elephant face, try and make an elephant sound and go, fake. <laughs> Uh, give me another performance. Okay. Oh, I crit failed. Natty one. Yeah, you're getting worse. <laughs> it's that brain damage you did to him. <laughs> it's not necessarily that you're trying to just imitate Jonah's voice. You're also trying to be like kind of mocking in the tone, uh, but it just comes out robotic and very flexible, like fake. <laughs> <laughs> like Microsoft Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like just like a almost like a really low poly version of Jarna's face. <laughs> like, fake. Like 8-bit Jarna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, Haldak, give me a survival check. All right, that'll be oh, a 19. You're kind of looking at all these tracks that are currently in this area. There's a lot more of these tracks than were at the Valance homestead. 
and you're seeing a pattern that you think you can follow. Oh, oh yeah, guys, this way, let's go. And I'm just gonna start running down that path, where, wherever these things are. Uh, what is everyone else doing as the farmer is getting up to his feet? <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna follow the midget. I apologize to the farmer for my group's idiocy. Explain to him that this really is my least favorite pairing I've ever been stuck with. Oh, okay, well, I, I appreciate the, the healing, but and he looks up that Abby. Can I have my cow back, please? Glexoldive is currently laying another egg. Okay, okay, but can you can you multitask and get my cow down, please? Uh, Glexoldive extends us. Oh, he, the cow's already down. Hey, you put it down after I hit you in the head. Oh, okay, you let the cow, like, come all the way down. Yeah, yeah. After I punched him in the head and told him to put it down. But yeah, he just, like, grabs his cow, and the cow just starts licking his said, Oh, easy, easy now. I'm, I'm glad you're okay. Let's get back inside before anything else terrible happens. Perfect, all right. And then after all that, I would uh, follow a deck. And uh, you guys are just here as going inside. I have a letter to write to King. Hopefully it's about our heroics. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> Aldak uh, has like a good jump on you guys, despite his small size. Seems like uh, Aldak, the tracks are heading towards this area over here. Um, and as you get closer, it looks like a, a quarry for the town. Yeah, I'm just following the track, yipping and hollering the whole way, like I'm going to get some action. As you get to the quarry, the trail kind of goes a bit cold, giving everyone else enough time to kind of catch up. Uh, you see me kind of like running in circles, trying to catch the. Come on, come on, where where'd you go? Well, come on. Glexel Bleb will hear um, Haldak talking about getting some action. Glexel Bleb is just gonna make a comment uh, like, "He's going to need protection." <laughs> I, th I think that's the name of his mace. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys do follow Haldak, who's following the perplexing tracks, and um, they do lead to the heart of the Callus Quarry. But uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, give me some perception checks. As you guys are looking over this once bustling mining site that now sits eerily silent. Oh my God, that's a ten. Man, you have not. I'm rolling. I'm rolling terribly right now. I got an eight. Seventeen. So yeah, how that you've kind of lost track of where these tracks were heading, and Jarna, you get there and like you've kind of started following the tracks, mostly just like keeping an eye on how that. Uh, but as you get here, you kind of notice that they kind of go off into like a group of these bushes. And as you kind of peek over, you see a hole in the ground. Suspicious hole. Amongst the overgrown bushes and shrubs, you discover a hidden aperture that beckons your attention. The hole, concealed by the verdant foliage, appears deceptively deep, its steps shrouded in darkness. An aura of trepidation envelops the sight, as a realization dawns that this enigmatic abyss holds the key to uncovering the ominous secrets that have befallen the town of Callus. How, how deep? It's tough to gauge the deepness, even with, like, your extended dark vision. Um, mainly because, again, dark vision doesn't really give you, like, regular sight. It can just kind of make out shapes. And if there's no shapes to make out, it's kind of tough to see. Um, but as you peer closer, uh, you notice something particularly unsettling. Uh, a sinuous black webbing clings to the side of the hole, extending down into the shadowy depths. Uh, this eerie webbing seems to thrive in the areas untouched by the sun's rays. Uh, serving as a grim reminder that the abyss may harbor something far more sinister than initially perceived. How big is the hole, like, as far as width goes? It would probably be 15, 20 feet. Oh, so it's a big fucker. And it's a big hole. Yeah. Right. And again, you guys notice that the block webbing seems to really only be sticking where the sun isn't hitting it directly. Does it only stick where the sun don't shine? Uh, yes. You don't want it where the sun don't shine, because that's the only place it can actually exist. Okay. Mm. What would you guys like to do? Well, I assume Jarna would tell us. It's like, hey, I think I found it. In which case, I'm going to take out the bindle and collect as much of that uh, black webbing, and I'm sticking it right back into the back. Oh, yeah, and, like, you do have to kind of, like, basically, like, lie down straight and put your hand into this hole. But you do hear the wine, like, twirling. Uh, kind of like doing that same sound when Blexogleb had it, like... And uh, you do recall that it was able to hold a few hundred yards? 200 yards, yeah. Or feet? I'm not sure which one. I know one 200. Of those. Yeah. <laughs> Two, 200 of some sort of measurement uh, related to D&D. As you do this, it stops. And you look, you have this massive spool now of this black spider silk. 
And as you look down, there's still more. Well, shit. I, I'm going to, again, stick that back into the sack, and, I, and I'm going to tie it off. I light a torch. Does that do anything to the spider silk? Do you try to light the spider silk on fire? No, no, no. I just want to see if the light does anything to it. Uh, I mean, it shines a bit in the light, but it doesn't dissipate the way it did when it was in the sunshine. Now I'm going to try to light it on fire. Uh, it does not light. Okay. That's uh, disappointing. I'm going to pick up some rocks, and I'm going to cast light on them, and then drop them into the hole to see you know, if I can see the lights, you know, like see the bottom of this thing. And as you drop it, you do just watch it fall down, and it does eventually stop with a nice little, like, pluck. You would expect it to echo back if it was, like, an empty cavern, but you don't get really get that acoustic as it drops down. It looks like it's about 30 feet down. Uh, how many people can fit in a three-foot diameter circle? Probably just one. I mean, maybe if you, like, squeezed in, you might be able to fit Haldak, Walker, and Blexogleb, because Haldak's small, Walker's medium, so Haldak could, like, squeeze under him. And you're just... Amorphous. <laughs> amorphous. But Jonna would probably have to be by himself. Or you could maybe do Jonna and Haldak again, because he's so small. Has anyone actually gotten Haldak's attention, or is he still, like, sniffing, looking for the track? I figure Jarnas, like, told us to come check this shit out, so that's why I was over there. Because I can levitate again. Or, or since it's, it's becoming night soon, we set up an ambush for this thing to come out. Uh, Haldak, how does that uh, rub you? Not well. So what, what, what's the problem? Are we afraid of little spider webs? Yeah. So, well, 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 we know where it lives. So uh, we can stab it when it opens the front door, or we can jump down in there and let you do your thing. Do any of you know anything about animals? Uh, this, this thing's funky. Is there something big enough that we could all fit on? Like a tree trunk or something? Yeah, that would support our weight. I know Jarna's, we, all, we don't have to talk about his weight, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well, I, I figured I, I just, you know, get some rope and a python. And just, you know... Throw me some perception checks. Finally rolled high. Oh, finally. Uh, finally. <laughs> wow. I can levitate something if we can all get fit on it. And then I could just float us down. Uh, how Dak, would you get for perception? No, I didn't roll perception. I'm not paying attention to anything. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Walker... I'm going to start tying a rope to a tree, and then I'm going to tie it to myself. Yeah, so uh, as you're doing that, Walker, Blexogleb, and Jana. Uh, this is the first time that you notice the tree that Haldak's tying himself to. It's a pretty big tree, and it's right next to the hole. We can block. If we, we could cut down the tree and block <laughs> the hole. <laughs> You're not cutting down my anchor tree. Something needs to hold me. I just imagine Haldak is like using that as support and like going down the hole, and we're just like, yes, let's cut down the tree, <laughs> and we're just like hacking at it. <laughs> yeah, you guys are like halfway through this thought, and he's like halfway down the hole. Hey, you, Cleric Boy, cast light on me. Uh, Johnny, you've been called Cleric Boy. Cast light on his crotch. <laughs> I look down on my crotch, I look at you and I'm like, attaboy, and I start climbing down. <laughs> it's a very small light. So, Haldak, using this doll, when did he touch you? <laughs> Haldak goes back to the HR of the order. <laughs> he made my willy glow. <laughs> it's dim light. He's like, yeah, it's been like this for 24 hours. I think I'm supposed to see a doctor. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty cool going out at night to take a piss. <laughs> but yeah, Haldak, you're going down. Anyone else, what are you guys doing? Well, everybody else, what are you doing? Oh, I'm God. still pondering away into the hole. At, at this point in time, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to follow our, <laughs> our, our retarded barbarian. And I'm just going to climb down the hole after him. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, Haldek, you will be the first one down. As so we're climbing down, I'm just going to cast Dark Vision on myself. You guys are all going down, I imagine, at this point? Could I see if, as I'm going down, I know regular fire didn't affect the black silk? Like, unless you have, like, like sunlight beam or something like that. I have Sacred Flame, or even Word of Radiance, which does radiant damage. Sacred Flame is a, uh, is a cantrip, too, right? Yeah, they, they both are. So I want to see if Sacred Flame uh, deals any damage or, or burns this shit. See, as you're going down, the spider webbing is on the side of the walls where the sun hasn't been hitting it. 
and it is sticky, but not so sticky that it keeps you like stuck. Just that it kind of slows you down a bit. You cast Sacred Flame on one of these spots, and it does seem to disintegrate a little bit where it was hit, but there's so much of it that it really doesn't do too much. Uh, but it does seem affected by it. Okay. Perfect. I imagine that Glexobleb was like standing at the top, and he's just pitching all these preposterous ideas on how to get into the hole, and then before he realizes that everyone else has already started to descend, and then um, he just walks in shame over towards the rope and starts to descend himself. <laughs> Oh, we definitely know that the order is going to use this silk as fire retardant. <laughs> You're well, all fireproof now. You can't say the R word. <laughs> retardant? Whoa. I had a brother who was retardant. <laughs> hey, your brother was fireproof? Yeah, he was a fire genasi. He was retardant. <laughs> as you descend into the hole, you find a small area immediately surrounding the entrance. Uh, where the sunlight does filter in just enough uh, to burn through some of the webbing, uh, offering brief respite from the overwhelming darkness in this patch of sunlight. Uh, the eerie spider-like webbing retreats, leaving a faint silken outline on the walls and floor. Uh, however, as your eyes adjust to the dimness, you realize the true nature of this place. The entire expanse of the burrow is covered in nightmarish webs that envelop the walls, ceiling, and floor alike. They glisten in the faint light, revealing the intricate patterns woven into the strands. The air is heavy with a musty, earthy scent, and a palpable sense of foreboding clings to the suffocating atmosphere within this tangled webwork. And this is where we'll pick up next week. Wait a second, this is the Xenomorphs from Alien. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to see what you guys find next time.